Zoom has become the go-to video teleconferencing software that everybody's using from your mom to even your boss. And now we're especially seeing people use it for interviewing. So how do you take that Zoom interview and edit it into something that people are gonna really wanna watch? Hey, I'm JB and I'm here to help you level up your editing game. And so today we're talking about Zoom interviews and how can you turn those into something that's really worth watching? So let's talk about that. The nice thing is Zoom has made it so easy to record inside of it. Anybody can do it. It's built in. It's not a separate app to where you can just start the conversation, hit record. And then once it's done, take that video and upload it if you wanted to but we don't wanna just leave it there, right? And you know how I know that? It's because you're watching this channel and we don't just do things normal. We try to take it another level, another step farther than we normally would to make it just that much better and engaging. And some of the ways we can help ourselves in the edit is by making some changes early on. We wanna be smart before we start. So let's look at some of the preferences and changes that you can make before you record that'll help you later on. So first go to your Zoom preferences and we're gonna change a few things. Let's go over to the video tab and we wanna make sure that HD is enabled as well as making sure the aspect ratio is 16 by nine. Now I want you to go to the recording tab and I want you to make sure that under local recording, you're choosing where you wanna save that recording. Great editors are organized. And so we wanna choose where that file is gonna live, whether on an external hard drive or internal, just you wanna know where you're putting your files. And then you're gonna turn on record separate audio file for each participant. This will allow you to mix each person's audio separately and give you that flexibility versus having one combined file. Now I got three other pro tips for you before you start recording to kind of help make sure you're in the right spot. So first of all is location. Location, location, location. Make sure you're in first a quiet spot. I know outdoors looks great, but there's gonna be wind and cars driving by and all kinds of just sound coming from everywhere. So try to do this inside if you can. And also it's really nice having a nice giant light source from a giant window, but don't put it behind you because then your, your camera is gonna be having so many issues trying to figure out what exposure it needs to be at, especially if you're using the built-in web camera it's going to be an exposure disaster. Secondly, mic. Get a mic. Get some sort of a mic, whether it's something like this, which is, this is the Rode Pod mic, which I really love, and it's pretty cost affordable at $100, but there's other mics out there like the ATR2100, which is a great podcasting mic, and it goes USB directly into your computer. You can also get lapels that are fairly cheap as well. Just something, anything to give yourself better audio, because just like your built-in webcam, your built-in microphone on your laptop is a piece of crap. So, and finally, number three, get headphones. Use your headphones because you don't want that echo happening as they're talking to you and you're talking to them and you're hearing each other's voices on your own recording. It's gonna sound bad. You're, it's gonna be really hard to get rid of that. And I know I said there were three tips, but there's actually a fourth one. Right as you're about ready to hit record, your interviewing person is right there, ready to go. The last thing you need to do before is make sure you're in the right mode where you can see you and the other person. Do not go over to active speaker mode because it's gonna jump back and forth between each of you and you're not gonna be able to see each other at the same time and have that option for reaction shots or even split screen seeing each other on at the same time. Okay, now you can hit record. Now once your session's done, go ahead and find that file. You're gonna also see some separated audio files and one mixed file in there. You can go ahead and bring all of those inside of Premiere. Now, what I wanna do in here to really give myself some flexibility and some options is I wanna create some camera angles using multicam. So if you've never done multicam before, you wanna learn more about that, go check out my video in the link below uh, to learn about how you can set up multicam and a lot of pro features inside that that you may not be aware of. Now highlight everything you've imported and select create multicam. Tell us whatever you want to, but you can just use the endpoint for your syncing point. We're gonna first start by changing the settings up to a 1080p timeline, because that's what we wanna work with. And then we're gonna kind of rearrange things and create our camera angles. So go into your sequence settings. You're gonna change this to 1920 by 1080. Then go down to your previews and change that to QuickTime and Apple ProRes. That's just how I like to have it set up just to make sure all of my files are in that ProRes option for when I'm rendering. 
Now right click on your multi-cam and select open in timeline. Now to create our different camera angles, just take your video layer and you're just gonna duplicate that a couple times so you've got three layers on here. So we're gonna adjust each of these layers so that layer one is just me, layer two is gonna be my guest, and then layer three is gonna be the view of both of us at the same time, the split screen view. And now we have our three angle multi-cam to work with. So you've got that split screen view and it's just over black and that's not interesting. We wanna do something a little bit more. So inside of that, we're gonna use what's called nesting to be able to add a background to that camera layer. So you're gonna right click on that video layer and you're gonna choose nest. Now go into the nested sequence and add the background that you want onto the bottom layer. And we're gonna crop out on the video layer. We're gonna crop out the black space above and below using the crop tool. And now you've made the space more interesting as it fills up the full frame. Another thing you can do inside of nested sequences is to make each person fill up the entire side of the screen that they're on. To do this quickly, you can just copy over the first two layers from your main sequence to the nested sequence. Then adjust each person to be a little bit to the side of each of their screen. Then just add a crop to the topmost layer. You can even spice it up with a custom design crop by using the pen tool if you want. Now, so far these tips have been utilizing just Zoom features and recording to do all of the work for the actual files that we're working with. But as you can tell, the video is pretty bad. It's pretty poor. It's going to give you a 720p video and then you and your interviewer are taking up half the screen. So it's really more of a 360p video. Oh, it's so gross. Even saying that out of my mouth, you have to 300 times that to fit on a full HD timeline. And then there's audio. If there's any little minor hiccup or glitch or momentary mishap, it's you're going to hear that in the final audio. And also Zoom is going to be processing that audio constantly for echo and noises and stuff. And it's just going to sound like Zoom is going to be process quality of sound that we really want to go for. So here's some further tips for you to really take it an even bigger step forward. So start with audio. One way to get better audio quality is by having each person record their audio separately. For your guest, if they're not super high tech, you ju could just have them use a separate iPhone, just do a voice memo and then have them email it to you afterwards. And then for you, you could just open up QuickTime and do a new audio recording. And just make sure it's the same mic that you're using for your Zoom as well. Uh, so you're gonna get a nice clean feed uh, that's not gonna have to worry about a connection issue. So now video, how do you get better than 360p crappy video? I hate, I hate, I hate just thinking about it. It annoys me that it, we're at this place in 2020. Anyways, so one idea is just to, like you do with the audio, do QuickTime video, do a video recording, and just make it the same as your webcam. And that's gonna give you, especially if you set it to your max setting, it's gonna give you the full resolution of whatever your camera is capable or that it's sending right now. So if it's your built-in webcam, it's gonna be 720p, which doesn't sound amazing, but at least it's not a streaming quality, and at least that's better than 360p when you zoom it all the way up. And if you do the max quality is going to be ProRes. But if you're doing a much higher quality camera, if you're streaming like a digital SLR, you can get an even better quality doing that 1080p or greater, which is what we're kind of looking for. And if your guest is tech savvy, then have them do the same thing as well. And again, have them email you the file. Option number two is to do a screen recording, either inside of QuickTime or a screen recording software, but make sure you have your window large on the screen. And just know everything's gonna get recorded that's on the screen, like the highlighting bars and nameplates that you might have to cut out later. But if you're really worried about resolution and having a better picture quality, you might just wanna not use Zoom video. Use a separate camera. Instead, you can get a GoPro and mount it just like a little bit above your webcam so the person is seeing you from a similar angle to what they would be on the webcam anyways. Uh, and then you are looking like you're talking to each other still, but it's gonna get a much better resolution, obviously, than that 360p that you were getting. You could use your iPhone if you're using your laptop to do the interview anyways. Maybe even consider a second off-axis camera that you can use for an even more options to spice up the video. So no matter if you record on a separate GoPro, on your iPhone, on a separate audio recorders, whatever, just make sure you're still recording inside of Zoom because that's gonna give you a great 
syncing point for all of your different files. So those are some of the options you have to make even better Zoom interview videos or whatever you wanna do on Zoom if you do sketch comedy, SNL, whatever. But thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you got some value out of this, hit the like button. And if there's someone that you know has been making these videos, making interview videos on Zoom and come on, it's not that great what they're doing. Maybe send this to them and help them out a little, little bit to help them make some better videos as well. Because that's what we're doing here. We're helping you and others level up your editing game.